Hello, this is David Ferguson from MLC CAD System, and today we're going to go ahead and program a simple 2D plate style part. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is create a simple stock model based off the part. Let's just call this stock A. And I'm a firm believer in very bright colors for stock models, so you always know what they look like and where they are. And I'll just do a quick select corners and define the 3D size of the box, 4.5 by 4.5 by 5. That looks all right. I'll just green check and create that. And I'm immediately ready to start toolpathing. So I'm just going to jump right in. So we'll start with the facing routine. And I'll use the stock boundary for that. And I've already got a face mill on that machine. I just have to find it. There it is, tool number 12. Uh, I'll go ahead and do a, a dynamic pattern. Change the step over a little bit, make sure I'm not leaving any stock. Uh, I don't think I need any depth cuts on this. It's a pretty shallow cut, so I'll just go down to my linking parameters. And I'm going to set these up the first time, and I've got this machine definition set to carry these numbers down for me. So I'm going to use a absolute clearance value of an inch on the part at the start and stop, and my retract will be traditionally incremental and in, say 0.25, put my feed plane a little bit below that, and I'll be changing my top of stock and depths from absolute to incremental sort of as they apply, but for this, absolute's fine. So I'll just go ahead and go for top of stock based off the stock boundary, it gives me my height there, and my depth would be the something off the top of the part, so I'll just find an edge there, and that gives me my depth, and I can generate that toolpath very quick. Now I'm going to avoid verifying or backplotting these till I'm done. So next order of business would be to deck off uh, the top of the part and leave the boss there. So I'll use a, a 2D high speed dynamic with an outside strategy. And I'll go ahead and use the outside boundary again. This is probably the last wireframe channel I'll use in this part, but we'll go ahead and put that there. And then for an avoidance region, uh, I'll switch over to solid chaining, and a new feature for Mastercam 2020 is the ability to select what they call an outer edge of a face. So I'll put it on the outer edges, and I'll just click this top face of the boss, and that gives me that outside avoidance region. If I can preview that, that looks like what I want to do. We'll go ahead and we'll grab a tool. I'll grab tool number six, which is just a half inch bull nose. And then I'll jump down to my cut parameters, and I'm going to bump the step over up a little bit on this. I'm going to open up the toolpath radius a little bit, and I'm going to leave about a thou or ten thou on the wall uh, so I can come back and clean that up. But otherwise, everything here looks good. Uh, no depth cuts. It's an outside cut, so I don't need entry motion. I don't want breakthrough. So I can go right down to my linking parameters. And you can see my values have carried over. So I'll just go ahead and just adjust those. My top of stock would, of course, now be the top of the part, and my depth would be based off the height of that shelf. I can pick that off that point, I get that, and then, you know, uh, my defaults are already set up uh, with my preferred arc filtering for a high-speed dynamic, so tolerance is set to a thou with the tolerance uh, split 50-50, and we'll go ahead and green check that, and that looks all right to me. Well, I've got that half inch. I want to go ahead and tackle this hole in the center. So I'll go up and I'll grab a circle mill. And I can just key that off the edge of the solid. That grabs me that and also grabs the hole diameter, which a circle mill needs. Uh, we'll use the same tool, tool number six. And under cut parameters, this isn't quite set up fully for me. So I just have to make a couple of changes. Uh, drop the stock to leave. I'm copying to the left. You can see I've got the hole diameter already there. Uh, roughing, I'll turn that on and I'll put the step over down to say 25%. Uh, the helix itself is fine. Uh, finishing, we'll just go ahead and we'll just do uh, one finish pass at 10 thou at the bottom. Uh, transitions and lead in, lead out for that finish pass. I'll go ahead and put in some values there. Uh, a little bit of overlap on that circle. Uh, no depth cuts. I do want a little bit of breakthrough on that. So I'm just going to go ahead and put, say, uh, 50 breakthrough. It's a bull nose, so I want to go a little deeper on that. And then under linking parameters, again, the depths carry over. And I'm going to go ahead and paint the top of stock again here. Oops, sorry, these should be absolute values. Top of stock there. And depth will be keyed off the bottom. 
and I'll go ahead and generate that toolpath. All right, so that's everything I can do with the half inch. What I'm going to do now is switch over to a 3 8 and I'll go ahead and take care of these two pockets and this slot over here. So again, I'm going to use a 2D high speed dynamic mill set to an inside strategy this time and still using solid chaining. This time I will chain for what's called a face and I will just simply pick the two bottom floors of that pocket. Looks good. And we'll switch down to a 3 8 end mill. Um, there it is, tool number eight. Under cut parameters, uh, I'm going to drop the step over down a little bit, say down to 20. Minimum toolpath radius needs to be a little tighter. I'll put that back down on 10%. Still leave 10 on the walls. Uh, shouldn't need any depth cuts, but I will go for an entry motion and I'll do a profile, uh, bring it a little closer to the top of the part and drop the plunge angle just a little bit to be nice to it. Uh, no breakthrough, linking parameters. Uh, again, those values carry over. Top of stock would be top of that pocket feature, and the depth, of course, would be the bottom of the pocket. And that looks okay. Arc filter again dropped in, so I'll go ahead and generate that toolpath. All right. Now, what I'm going to do next is use a contour, and in this case, a partial loop right there, to go ahead and select and machine this feature. So. I'll go ahead and select and start the loop there. And then I'll choose to end that loop there. So I've got a start and end point based off the solid. And again, we'll use the 3 8 for that. Cut parameters, comping to the left, not leaving any stock on the wall. It's just a contour. All that looks OK. Uh, I am going to use depth cuts. And I'll just go ahead and go down uh, 150. Lead in, lead out. It's a little unique. Uh, I want to have almost a straight line so I'll go ahead and leave the length at 100% but I'll drop the arc radius to 10 and the sweep to 10 and then one thing I did forget on depth cuts I will want to keep that tool down since I'll be off the part as it leads in and leads out that looks all right breakthrough again I'll do about 50 no multi passes no tabs I'll go down to my linking parameters and I'll go ahead and carry the top down to the bottom and I'll go ahead and generate that toolpath and that looks about like what I was looking for okay now with that 3 8 my next order of business would be to clean up uh, the walls of the pockets and the walls around that boss and again I'm just going to use that doing a contour and for solid chaining I'll do a, a complete loop or a full loop and there's loop number one counterclockwise loop number two also counterclockwise, and then loop number three needs to be clockwise. Okay. And if you notice, I'm chaining off the bottom of those two elements, or those three elements, the two pockets and the boss, because I'm going to use an incremental and zero value to hit multiple depths. So three eighths again. Hopping to the left, no stock to leave, uh, no depth cuts this time. My lead in, lead out, I'm going to do something a little little different here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to drop the length to zero and put the arc radius to 50, the sweep to 90, and then I'm going to use a helix height of 0.2. And that should keep me off that floor so I don't drag the floor with my cleanup tool. And then we're going to use quite a bit of overlap on that, almost 100 thou. So 0, 50, 90, helix height of 2. Uh, no breakthrough. Make sure I turn that off. And then I go right down to my linking parameters. And I'm going to go ahead and put the top of stock to the top of the part, or top of the stock that was. This is fine. Um, but what I want to make sure I do is on the depth is I want to use an incremental and zero value. Uh, that way when I generate, I can hit multiple depths. And you can see my lead in, lead out is sweeping into the part, uh, not across the floor. All right. So that takes care of the milling. Um, next order of business would be to drill some holes. So I'm going to go ahead and spot drill the bolt circle. And I'm going to use one of the new features in 2020, uh, which is the ability to select multiple holes um, based off the solid model. So I'm actually going to hold down my control key while I select these. And with my control key held down, I'm going to pick the interior wall feature of one of these holes, say right about there. And you can see it goes, it goes ahead and 
grabs all of those holes. Didn't do them quite in the order I wanted to, so I'm just going to jump over to my sort, and I'm going to do a quick point-to-point -point sort and select the first hole, and that's a little better. And then I'll just go ahead and green check. I'll go ahead and grab a tool. In this case, it's going to be my spot drill, uh, which is, I say right there, it's my half-inch spot drill. And under cut parameters, it's just a drill counter bore. And I'll go down to my linking parameters. And since this is a drilling op, uh, I have to set these values up once again. But once they're in there, they'll carry over. And we'll keep the retrack at 0.5. That's fine. Uh, top of stock. We'll go ahead again. Key off the top is absolute. And I want to go uh, a little bit less than that. So just say 0.34 minus say 50. That gives me 0.29 absolute. I think that'll get me where I need to go. Just making sure tip comp is turned off. So I'll go ahead and I'll generate that. Um, yeah. And there we go. There's our spot drill. And what I'll do is I'm just actually going to go ahead and copy this guy. Since all the drill points are selected, I'm just going to switch to a tool. And that is a, if I can remember, Uh, is the 3 16th. Sorry about that. Uh, tool number 10. And I'm going to go to my cut parameters. This one I'll do is a peck cycle. And I'll just go ahead and peck at an eighth of an inch. And then on my linking parameters, because the peck cycle is keyed off the uh, R value, the retract, I need to have that as close as possible. And 0.5 isn't going to do it. So I'm going to bring that down to about 20. And then I'm going to use my retract or my clearance height up here uh, for the actual repositions. So top of stock, again, would be top of the part. Depth, these are through holes, so I can key them off the bottom if I want to. And then I want to go ahead and turn on my tip compensation. And it just has a standard 10 thou breakthrough, and that should be OK. Uh, once I regenerate that, I've got my through holes. I can do that pretty quickly. Uh, for these holes here, um, I could do a couple of things. What I'd actually like to do is go ahead and uh, uh, helix bore these with an end mill and then cut the chamfers themselves. So we'll just go ahead and jump up to our 2D gallery and we'll grab a helix bore. And again, I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to select that interior hole feature and it grabs all four of those matching holes. And for the tool there, again, we're going to use uh, our 3 8 Nope, sorry, we got to go a little smaller than that. Um, I've got a quarter inch, so we'll use tool number three. And under cut parameters, don't have this one set up quite yet, so we'll just zero out the stock on the wall. Uh, I'll go ahead and drop the helix a little bit, and we'll just finish that with a circle on the bottom of the hole. And we'll just leave five on the wall for that finish. Uh, under linking parameters, we'll go ahead and do our clearance and our retract as we were using it. Top of stock and depth will be set absolute. Top of stock, top of the whole feature, depth, the bottom of the part. But one thing I have to be aware of, there is no breakthrough for helix bore. So if I do want um, a little bit of breakthrough, I have to add it here. And I'm just going to go ahead and add 50 to it. And then we'll go ahead and generate that. And I've got a good helix bore. Uh, that leaves me with uh, the chamfers to do, and I'm just going to do those with a, a chamfer toolpath, which is, in fact, a contour. So I'll just grab another contour, and I'll chain these, in this case, off an edge. Uh, a, a complete arc or a circle on a solid is considered an edge, so I'll just chain those guys. There's one. There's two. There's three. And there's four. Now, when I grab this chamfer mill, Master Cam will probably yell at me, which it didn't. When I go down to my uh, cut parameters, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set it for a 2D chamfer. And the chamfer width on this is uh, 0.03125. And then because uh, I like to, I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit more bottom offset. And because of where I've selected the chamfer on the, the top edge of the chamfer on a model that already has the chamfer, uh, a nice trick 
is whatever chamfer width value I have there, I'm also going to go ahead and leave a stock. So 0 0.01325, uh, 0 0.03125. Uh, and that just puts the, the, the tool in the right position to cut the, the correct width of the chamfer. Uh, shouldn't need any depth cuts, but my lead in, lead out, I'm going to have to play around with a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and go for, a, let's say, 25% on length and 25% on arc radius. And I'm going to sweep that from about 120 uh, with no helix height. And then I'll leave the t uh, overlap, say, at about 25, which is quite a bit, but that should work. And under my linking parameters, uh, top of stock and depth are both keyed off the top edge of that chamfer. Everything else looks OK. And we'll say, all right. And this is the only one I am going to back plot because I just want to make sure that that tool is sitting OK on that surface. And that chamfer looks to be right where I want it to be. So with that done, uh, the part is essentially programmed. I think I've got all the features uh, machined on it. And what I'll do is I'm going to jump into uh, my simulator options. And because I am using a stock model, I need to tell Mastercam that I'm using a stock model. So I'll do it there. And then for my fixtures, I just want to make sure that I have uh, the vice turned on and uh, the parallels in this case. Uh, that way they show up in Verify as well. So with those selected, I'll go ahead and open up Verify and we'll take a look and see how we did. All right. So I'll set this to a reasonable speed and I will press play. I'm going to turn off the fixture and go ahead and examine the part. That looks like that turned out OK. So using a template, I can go ahead and do a series or family of parts very quickly. Um, even if they're not that similar, I've already got you know, the, the setup of course can be moved around. The vice jaws can of course be opened. I can change out the parallels for the way it's being clamped. I can swap the soft jaws in and out if I need to. Um, I can even go as far as to add strap clamps to the vice uh, as well as of course, you know, just for fun, you know, a basic model of the machine itself. You can go as far as you need to with this. In truth, all I really needed to program this was the part and a stock boundary. Uh, everything else after that was extra, um, but it's there if I need it. So thanks very much uh, for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.